Well, our man Andre Adams joins us again out of Oz. We always appreciate your time, dude. Uh, day one. Look, I hate to say this out loud, so I'm going to whisper it. I'm quite a fan of the way England played cricket. I oh, don't no, no, go. Ah, I hate myself. I feel, I feel unclear. But uh, look, okay, this is my assessment. You shoot it. You shoot it down in flames. Okay. So England lose the toss. But their mindset is such that they want to get on the front foot and dominate so much. So what they do is they go out there and they absolutely go hell for leather, belt, belt the ball all over all over the oval, uh, get 300 and something runs, which isn't a great score in a first innings, but on a first day it is. And that gives them 20 overs more, more, more or less than to have a crack at us. It's just the attitude and the will and the wanting to actually get the test moving. After one day, they look as though they could clean this up in three or four days. So I'm, I'm actually applauding it. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the the dangerous thing when you're playing England at the moment is they're they're playing a brand of cricket which is which has been up, well, unseen actually. It's a it's a it's a very new brand of cricket. People aren't people don't expect to see Test cricket where bowlers are going at five and six and over. Um, and so because when you play four day cricket and you, you you grow up watching Test cricket and you and you come to the first class system, that's that's a bad day with the ball when you're going at five, five and a half, six and over. That's a really bad day with the ball. And so every ounce of you, all of your, all of your instinct is saying this is not right. This is not the way the game's played. This is this is a bad day for us. Um, and that's that's what they're doing. They're, they're they're going out there. They're making you feel a certain way. And so you, you respond kind of in a shock method. And um, I thought New Zealand did actually actually did pretty well around the twenty about the twenty fifth over when they started to. Um, Changed their field sets and they started they started to counteract what England were doing. Um, but before that, it was quite traditional. It was quite you know uh, all the fielders are up and no third man, all that kind of stuff. And England are playing a, a white ball brand of cricket with a red ball, and it's taking teams by surprise, even though they know it's coming. Dre, a couple of a couple of these blokes. Uh, Duckett, eighty four of sixty eight. Um, Harry Book, who just what a find this guy is. Every time he walks out, the you, you know he looks as though he's going to get at least a half century, if not a century. Eighty nine off eighty one. So they've got license to do that. Obviously, I mean that's clearly from what I don't know whether the coach or is it Stokes, who's obviously in charge as far as the you know the day to day stuff goes. But they you know they obviously give one or two a license. And the reason I'm saying this is because Joe Root obviously had that as well. And look, mate, when you're doing reverse sweeps after three or four balls and you get away with it, I mean, the crowd applauds and rah, rah, rah. When when you get caught doing it, you look like a right knob, a bell end, and that's what he looked like. But let's go back to Duckett and, 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 Duckett and also Brooke, who just, as you say, they're betting white ball cricket, mate. I'm just, I mean, Duckett, 14 boundaries. Brooke, 15 boundaries and a six. That's just, I mean, mate, I haven't seen this before. No, well, that's it. And I think you know the, the 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 sentiment you just made there around you know Joe Root looking a certain way. I think that's the problem with cricket is we're so concerned about what it looks like rather than what's effective that it gets it gets in gets in your brain and you you, you start worrying about all sorts of things rather than what's happening. And that's what England are doing. And I'll, I'll let you in a little story. When years ago, years and years and feels like a lifetime ago, um, Brendan McCullum was in his second season with Otago, and we were in. We're in a little motel there, and um, Alexander about to play a one-day game, and um, Craig Pryor was in that that uh, Targo side, so I went in to see him, and he had Nathan McCullum and Brendan McCullum uh, in his room, and um, they were playing a bit of PlayStation. I started talking to Brendan, and he said, he said in no uncertain terms, he said, uh, me and my brother, we're going to change the game. Uh, the way it's played in New Zealand is a bit boring, and we're, we're the future of New Zealand cricket. And I, I looked at him, and you know, you, your first instinct is to start laughing, and then I thought. Mate, he's serious. <laughs> he's, he's, and the way he said it, he said it was such conviction. I thought, bloody hell. Um, and, you know, so that, that's the kind of person that you're dealing with in a coach. And he's, his conviction is so strong that when he says to you, like, go and play your way, go and, go and be aggressive, you're getting a license from the coach to go and be yourself more than anything else. Because these players like, don't all play the same way. They're playing their way. And that's the problem with cricket in general is that we all get taught to play a certain way, but the best in the world play different to everyone else. They are different to everyone else, but we keep telling everyone to play down this generic, boring method, and we celebrate that rather than we celebrate the people who do something different. And like you said, you know, look like a tool when you get out, but that's just because it's different. And so, with a license like that, with a coach like that, and with a, with a captain who is encouraging you to be that person at all times, it, it's no wonder these guys are playing such attacking cricket. And I, and I think um, 
they are changing the landscape of test cricket and people are saying it was boring and you know, T20 was going to kill it. Well, T20 is actually making this game more exciting. Andre Adams with us. I'm going to go back in history as well and throw a couple of names at you. And I'm thinking the way that it's being played at the moment, uh, you imagine what Botham or, or Vivian Richards would do playing today with that kind of license. I mean, okay, both of them in 1981 and that incredible Ashes series took it away from England. I think 149 not out of... He was one of those guys who could come in and actually physically change a game. Viv Richards, obviously, you know, he just walked to the crease and changed the game. The other guy that I want to mention is is Gilchrist, who used to come in at seven for Australia as well, you know. And I thought he changed Test cricket because on day three or day four, he'd come and whack 80 off about 60 balls and put Australia in a position where they could declare at the end of day four and give them a full day and a bit to bowl you out. Are we seeing? I mean, this is an even bigger revolution than that, isn't it? I think I think on a grand scale it is. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about guys who actually, you know, they probably gave themselves that license, and that's what the best players have done over time. They've they haven't needed permission from anyone to be themselves, and so the likes of Viv and you know, and both of them and and and, and Curry, they they were different. You know, they were they were the, they were the main men, and so they were themselves. But but you know, you, you look through this list of players. You know, and, and you know, Ben Duckett and Harry Brook and um, Ollie Robinson, those guys, he, you know, two years ago, you wouldn't have heard of those guys, but they are just being themselves. They're being there. They're allowed to be themselves, and that's such a freeing thing to give to a young player that they can go and be themselves and just focus on playing cricket rather than how it looks and how it's perceived. And, um, you know, that's that's something that society can learn from as well. But I think in general, this is this is a team that's that's so free. And so when, you, when you've got a team that's this free, the question is, how do you put them under pressure? When they're not feeling any kind of uh, angst around the situation, how do you put them under pressure? Well, OK, well, I was just hoping that you'd answer that question yourself after you're asking it, but let's go back to that in a second. <laughs> you know, the other thing is, Dre, is that, look, not everyone can play like this, and I suppose the other beauty of it is you are going to see contrasting styles. I mean, not everyone has the lineup that can hit like England can. I mean, it's almost like they got a baseball lineup, one through six, there's your best hitters, isn't it? And I'm, I'm going to draw you a parallel. So we bemoaned, you know, England and perhaps even South Africa for years playing rugby because it's 10-man rugby, it's just up and unders and it's just rolling malls and all of that kind of bollocks. And the All Blacks, we want to spread it wide. Are we finally going to see, is what your point is, is that there's going to be a distinction between, a serious distinction between the way that teams play? I can't see every team doing what England are doing because, A, they don't have the players, but also, you know, you've got to actually believe in that, buy into it and have the confidence to actually do it. So this could be just as much fun in terms of test cricket now, as being a real cricket numpty and loving it like you do, that you actually, you know, you've got teams that are going to bring different styles, like a football team. I'm going to play a different way than you. Yeah, the, the, the most exciting thing about this is it, it, it breaks the perception of what test cricket is. And I think, you know, you've got when you say that players don't have, they don't have the players that can do that. But the reason that most teams don't have batsmen who strike the ball all over the park is because it's not it's not an acceptable way to play the game. You know, the perception is when, when the ball is red, you play like this, and when the ball is white, you play like this, and when there's only 20 overs, you play like this, and, and that's, the, the, the personnel stay the same, so they're, they're, they're fully capable of, of playing these shots and doing these things, but the problem is we've taught them that this is acceptable during this time, and this is acceptable during this time, and there's only freedom when it's okay for the coach to give them freedom, or the cricket fraternity gives them freedom. Even the commentators to a certain degree hold a, a level of control over the way the game's perceived because they either say that that's good or that's bad or that's reckless or that's not. And so what you're teaching people is to think a certain way. And this this England team have decided that they're doing it their way and they don't care what people think. And when you when you stop, you know, the subtle art of not giving a is you know, that book, that, that teaches you about being yourself and only worrying about what you need to um, control. And you can't control what people think, because, and, and act, ultimately it doesn't matter what they think. What matters is how you feel about what you're doing and your conviction to that. And that's where this team is at. So that's a, that's a massive challenge for the opposition. Andre, what Andre's talking about here is the subtle art of not given a, it rhymes, the truck starts with an F. I think a Mark, somebody, I think, wrote their book. I just handed it to my youngest son. Yeah, it's an absolutely brilliant book. And what you're unlocking here is for a lot of us fans at home, Dre, we always used to sit there and go, Listen, you bastards, you can hit 335 overs in a one day. Why can't you do it in a test match? And, and oh, because it's a red ball, because it's a white ball. That's exactly what you've been saying, right? Yeah, well, that, that's it. You know, like, you hear, oh, you can't do that all day. You, you know, you, you'll get out sooner or later. Or, yeah, because ultimately he starts thinking, that person, you know, they hit a six or a four, and they think, oh, shit, maybe I should get a one. Well, no, 
hit, if you can hit every ball for four, or if you can hit every ball for six, do that. But that's never been accepted before, and it's always been deemed as reckless because people are too quick to want to prove that they were right and you were wrong, and that you can't do that. Well, not many people are keen for you. Like if you if you ask coaches to go and sit in the back of a cricket net and watch young players play, they will point out all the shit they're doing wrong. They won't point out how well they strike the ball or that they got, you know, they 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 um, they have wonderful elegant cover drive or you know they they use their feet really well. They will talk about all the things that they're doing wrong, and that is essentially summing up cricket in 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 one little sentence. Is we're so focused on all the shit that could go wrong, we stop focusing on things that we could do right. And that's what the England team do. Andre Adams, sometimes with the Australian cricket team, of course, during Sheffield Shield at the moment, and Sydney Sixers bowling coach as well. All of that, I'm going to go back to a point you just made, or made a couple of minutes ago. Okay, you've got to put him under pressure. Did we do enough of that? With a limited bowling attack, sure. I thought that we chipped away, we got the wickets. That's why I said right at the beginning of this, that I thought getting them out anywhere around 300, or they declared 325 for nine, that's pretty damn good. But the bugger was it left, you know, too much time at the end of the day. And you saw what that pink ball did as well. I mean, I, you know, I mean, it's defying the laws of physics. I don't know whether it's the night time, the dew, the ball, whatever it is, but that ball's just made us a jack in the box. Yeah, well, I mean, that's... that's... You know, that's the exciting thing about this. It's, it's a slow wicket. Um, it, it has a little bit of swing to it. That pink ball offers offers an opportunity. And if you, you know, if you think about well, the way Brendan would be, I'm assuming, I'm not inside his head, but if you, if you think about the way he's thinking about this game, he's saying, well, this, this is our best time to bat, which is which is obviously first up, and this is the best time to bowl, you know, that period where they bowl with that, with that new pink ball under lights. And so the opportunity to score quickly and then have a crack if that's the way you're going to do it offers more than just trying to survive and get through because you lose the opportunity to bow under lights with the pink ball. So, you know, the, that, 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 that was, I think, the game plan. I'm just looking at it and thinking the way, you know, how aggressive Brendan is. They're thinking 325, you know, it gives you plenty of time and then they bow New Zealand out and they get to bat and control the speed of the game uh, the way that they want. And that's, that's obviously, um, they're in control mentally anyway. So, uh, do I put them under pressure enough? I, I, look, I think it's, I think it's incredibly difficult when you've got, you've really only got um, Tim Saudi and Neil Wagner as your experienced bowlers, right? Tim bowled, Tim bowled pretty well. Um, Wags with his first ball was beautiful first ball, but unfortunately it was a no ball, and, and that that's your opportunity to create pressure as the first few balls. Normally with batsmen, you've got your first twenty to thirty balls. That's your opportunity to create pressure and control the way they do things. But the England team are changing that up. They're walking down the wicket. They're changing the line in which you bowl, um, and they and they and they you know they're willing to nick the ball or, or play the ball over the slip. So that then takes out a catching option. So you know I think <laughs> I was watching Paul Blair take the bowl yesterday and thinking, I remember him bowling to Colin Monroe and seeing the same look on his face, <laughs> seeing the same look on his face when Mullis hit that world record now six is down in uh, down in Napier. So um you know, Paul Coogs and, and, and Blair Tickner, they they really they were under fire from the go and it's it would be so foreign for them and when you when you're on debut, there's a lot to think about. There's a lot going through your head. All right, a couple of quick questions, Sam. We'll let you go. Um, does it mean the end, though, of a guy that can sit and bat all day? Because that's what we need today. Now, we need to go back to, to traditional test cricket today. And for me, it's about surviving day two. It's about batting all day today and tiring them out a little bit. Because if they bowl us again today, uh, this could be a four-day test match. That, 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 to me, wrestles a little bit of control. I'm not, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care how many runs we get. We've just got to do time. Are we losing that from test cricket? And I hope not. Oh, no, and I also hope we're, we're never going to lose... The fighting battler who, who gets a draw. That test that you took us to at Eden Park where Monty Panesar walked out there and he didn't even need a bat. He just stood there and kicked it for three overs. I, want, I, I, don't, I don't want to lose that aspect as well. So I want everything. Uh, well, you can't have everything, but I think, I think in, some, in some situations you can. You can, you can have a situation where obviously it's getting tight in the last day for whatever reason, where the rain's intervened or there's been some sort of delay and, or it's just been a, a wicket that's incredibly difficult to... To get um, to take with its on, you know, I think um, there's still that. There was still that, but I think if you're, you know, you're thinking very traditionally here, we've got a back time. We, you know, it's got to be a war of attrition. It's, it's not. But I don't think that's going to that's going to beat the England team. You have to be willing to score more runs than them, and 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 match the way they play in terms of with aggression and um, and discomfort. And if you just try and play a game of attrition against these guys, you're going to be losing the whole time because you're trying to stay in your mould 
Whereas you have to, if you, if you just try and play, you know, you, you use the term, um, you know, flip it wide with the All Blacks before. If you just try and play that bang it up the middle scenario on a dry pitch against the All Blacks, and that, and and you just try and you know you, you try and win that game that way, and, and they're going to run you around the park and tire out your forward. So whilst you may your way might work a little bit, you have to be able to fight fire with fire. I'm not saying come out and bang it around the ground, but you have to be able to score a rate which puts their bowlers under pressure too. Otherwise. They're constantly in control of this game. If you're not scoring runs quickly against this team, they are in control. And so unless you're willing to bat for two days, two and a half days, and get 600, which is a, you know, a real, it's going to be a real struggle now since we're, you know, we've lost the top order already, um, this game requires speed, it requires pace, it requires you to get close to them and match them from a score point of view because that's the only way you stay level. All right, just looking at the total on the forecast. I mean, it's looking pretty damn good today. Um, another beautiful, fine day down there. A little bit of cloud, and it's going to be windy, of course. Okay, so we're going to get a full day's cricket in. All right, well, give us what, what we do today. We're three down. Obviously, Wags is going to swing it, isn't he? Because that's, and, and, and the pink ball's not going to do as much. So how does day two end right now through the looking glass for you? Well, you, you need, obviously, you need Devin Conway to go big. Daryl Mitchell's got a great record against England. Tom Bundle's got a fantastic record at the bat. And Michael Brace was just one of those unknowns as far as what are you going to get. And he does have the potential to smack the ball. Um, so it is a, it's a fairly flat surface, but it is swinging. Um, so I, th- I think New Zealand would need to be um, 300 uh, minimum today to, to make sure that they, they stay. And they need to, for me, they need to get them quickly enough so that they can have a bowl tonight. And that's, you know, that's either that or they're going to have to bat through to um, T tomorrow. So, you know, there's two ways to play this. And they, they definitely have the batsmen to do that. But I think, you know, Michael Brasel is a guy who scores very, very quickly. So does Daryl Mitchell and, and Tom Bundles and they should either. So there's, there's still plenty of opportunity. Devin Conway's in all ahead. Well, has he ever been out of Nick? He's been, you know, he's been an amazing find. So if they can, if they can provide some kind of pressure as far as the score goes, and score quickly enough so that England are not batting when the conditions are at their best, then, um, you know, there's a chance.